We're the travel hacking teachers, and for the last five years, we've been working and raising our family overseas. Just before the world took a pause from traveling, our family had started a tour of the United Arab Emirates. In the last three episodes, our family camped on a deserted beach on Dama Island, watched wildlife in Abu Dhabi's Mangrove Park, and visited the camel market and ancient tombs in Al Ain. Today, we head to a Bedouin camp to immerse ourselves in the sights and tastes of these traditional nomadic people. Bedouin. Desert dwelling Arab people of the Middle East and followers of Islam. Salam! After checking into our Bedouin camp, we met with our camp host and headed to our room. In camp, each family has its own private room, bathroom, and porch. Mahavan! We thought the Arabic themed room was very cute and a good size for our family of five. The kids each got their own bed, and four slept in the pack and play, at least most of the night. Our room even came with its own private bathroom with running water, shower, and a flush toilet. We spent most of our afternoon on the porch playing cards and relaxing while enjoying the view. The Bedouin people are known for their hospitality and no desert camp welcome is complete without Arabic coffee. Uh, yeah, cardamom for sure. As we enter the main part of the camp, another host greets us with kafias, these traditional Arabic headscarves. All right, what do you think, Granite? Looking good. I think we're settling into the UAE lifestyle. All right, we're going to go check out some sandboard next. After playing, it's camel time. In our last episode, we visited the camel market and learned that camels are mostly sold for their meat and their milk. Camels also play an important role in transportation and even for pulling a plow. Who knew? Before we head to dinner, we want to catch the sunset up on the dunes. This beautiful landscape stretches as far as the eyes can see. Traditionally, Bedouins lived in tents while moving their herds across the vast arid lands in search for plants to graze. Many Bedouins have abandoned this way of life, though a small fraction of the Arab population still lives this traditional nomadic lifestyle. After a huge buffet-style Arabic dinner, we regroup before a night of entertainment under the moonlit desert sky. We enjoy a variety of traditional dances, intricate henna tattooing, and everyone's favorite, fire breathing. As we wake with the rising sun, the camp is so peaceful and the smell of food fills the air. The chef is up early preparing these large Arabic breads. This calls for hot drinks and caffeine. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, tea. Yes. All right, so we want to take the time to uh, wrap up and for me, it's been a really fine time. The cost was about 900 dirhams, which is a little bit more expensive than we normally like to spend on a weekend vacation. But I think the fact that it was all inclusive totally helped. It included um, camel rides and sandboarding, plus all of our food and our drinks. Yep. And then a round of entertainment, like belly dancing and traditional dancing. So ultimately, I think for the value and the experience that we had and our children had was great. It was just a lot of fun. And if you're interested in an experience like this, I would recommend the Bedouin Oasis experience. If you like what you've seen in this video, do subscribe, hit the bell notification to get all our latest content uh, regarding family travel and life as an expat family. <laughs>